So Aberdeen's where I started. It's called Hong Kong Zai. Um, and then I went to this place called um, uh, Taiwal. Wow. Taiwal is what it's called. And I had wonderful experiences there too. I grew a lot there. I really learned that area. I had a baptism. Um, but the way, the way, um, what I learned the most there was more about myself for some reason. I think maybe every missionary goes to that. I learned more about myself there than anything. About what I can become. And um, that's where I learned to just really forget about myself. Because um, as a missionary, like I was saying, you compare. You you, um, you you keep some of your habits from your, for as being, just being an American. Um, you do things that make you not think I guess they just prevent you from becoming who you are. And that area, I was fighting all the time, just like, just deciding just to give up everything. I even, for example, I stopped doing my hair, like gelling it. I stopped trying to look really good. I just want to look presentable. I stopped trying to dress like really nice. Because in Hong Kong, they dress really fashionable there. And I like... Personally, I like fashion. I like to dress nice. And um, I, f I feel like because of that, though, it made me con cautious, like conscious of myself, I guess. Like I thought about what others thought about me. So that was preventing me from being just the small and simple things uh, make you better. And um, I just finally just gave up everything in that area. And I learned I just need to do my heavenly father as well. Just completely. Um, I just need to forget about, about my forgetting about yourself. Just forgetting about myself changed my whole entire mission. Changed it completely. And um, I went into this new area called International. And um, that's where I spoke English for a majority of my time. Up to here, I had still been sick for a while, but I got better and better. And um, here was just the most spiritual time ever. Um, one of the greatest times of mission. We, as a mission, in this zone... When I first got there, it was just kind of interesting, like what the missionaries were going through, their thoughts. I won't share exactly what was going on, but it was just different. Um, it was difficult. It was difficult but great at the same time. We are finding people. and um, But there's one day, I, after two transfers of being there, I honestly didn't like it at first because a lot of the missionaries I was in there with didn't want to be in there either. And so... It kind of made me not want to be in there. Um, but I still like just fought it out and like wanted to do the best I could. I wanted to help this area. And I was speaking English. And so I get this new campaign. I become senior campaign. And we just start tearing it up. Um, and, but what I want to lead to is, there's one day, is um, we found, a, her name's Yanni. And um, she's one of the people I found and we baptized. She, she's from Indonesia, and as a lot of people know, Indonesia, the majority of it's Muslim, but somehow she was converted to, to Catholic, um, to being a Catholic, or I can't remember exactly what it was. She hadn't been in church in a year and a half, and she says she prayed all the time to God to help her find somewhere to go to church. And um, she said the night before that she prayed to Heavenly Father. She said she prayed to Heavenly Father and she got the, the idea that she needed to go to this location, this time, that day. She said she's never been in that area, but she got the idea she needed to go there. And um, we were there. That's exactly where we go finding every day because there's one area in International where there, we were, it's called the, it's where I teach people from the Philippines and Indonesia the most. That's, that was, those were the majority of what I was actually allowed to teach. That's where we'd go because that's where they'd hang out. and Or the Filipinas, sorry. But she was Indonesian, which was kind of weird for her to be there. And But we see her, and I contact her, and she was just, she was, like, amazed. She just couldn't believe it. Because she says, I was supposed to be here at this exact location. I was asking Heavenly Father to help me, or God to help me. And we took her back to church. She's like, I've been wanting to go to church the last year and a half and haven't been. And um, he led her to us, and I didn't do anything. All we had to do was teach her, and she got baptized. And 
Um, it was it was really cool to see that Heavenly Father cares so much about all of His children. Um, he really wanted her to go to church, um, and she just she ate it up. She just she loved it. She knew straight away that the church was true, and um, I, ha I actually helped happen so many times while I was in that area. Um, the people from the Indonesia and the Philippines are just really prepared. And um, it's really, it strengthens your faith. That area really helped me just just take off. Like, it was awesome. Like, I, my faith grew just so much. And um, I was able to baptize several people there. And um, there was just one other time, real quick, where, well, I just have to share that. Um, just... Where Heavenly Father guides and leads so many people to you. He does it on your mission. You just need to be able to do the work, I guess. Um, that's what I had. All I had to do was stick on my hand and contact them. And not be afraid to, to go after everything. Just to go after everyone. Just to listen to the Spirit. That's the key thing, too. Is to listen to the Spirit. See who He wants to direct and guide you to. And that happened so many times on the mission. I'd be... Because there's, there's thousands of people in Hong Kong walking by you. You can't contact all of them. So I had to really develop the skill of listening to the Spirit. And that listening to the Spirit is probably what got me so many. I'll actually share that, a story about that in a second. Um, but it changed my mission. 